Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. This is the fourth in a series of videos exploring the valuation of CRISPR therapeutics by deep diving into each of its advanced stage pipeline candidates and checking out the market size and current standard of care as well as pricing power where possible. Today we tackle CTX310 and CTX320, both of which are in phase 3 clinical trials. I put a link in the description for the previous three videos in case you missed it. Let's get started. Welcome back. CTX310 is an investigational in vivo CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing therapy. It's designed to target and knock out hepatic expression of angiopoietin-like 3 protein or ANGPTL3. ANGPTL3 is associated with serum lipids and cardiovascular health in humans. The ANGPTL3 gene is located on chromosome 1 and it encodes a protein involved in lipid metabolism. Its normal function includes the regulation of triglycerides and cholesterol. Elevated levels of ANGPTL3 has been associated with cardiovascular risk. CTX310 aims to correct abnormal functioning by targeting and modifying the ANGPTL3 gene to restore more favorable lipid profiles and cardiovascular health. CTX320 is an investigational in vivo CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing therapy designed to target and decrease hepatic expression of lipoprotein A, which is also called as LP within bracket A. LPA is a type of lipoprotein associated with the risk of atherosclerosis and related disease in humans. LPA is unique type of uh, lipoprotein associated with an increased risk of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular diseases. CTX320 through CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing targets and aims to decrease hepatic expression of LPA as a potential strategy to reduce the risk of atherosclerosis in humans. We could summarize both target conditions under an umbrella term called dyslipidemia. The current size of uh, the market for dyslipidemia uh, is as follows. First, let us look at uh, pharmaceuticals, which includes prescription drugs like uh, statins, PCSK9 inhibitors, and bile acid sequestrants used to manage cholesterol and triglycerides. In 2023, the global market for lipid-modifying drugs, that is drugs targeting cholesterol and triglycerides, reached US dollar 36.4 billion, with an expected growth to US dollar 47.6 billion by 2028. The source of this information is Grandview Research. And then we look at diagnostics and testing. This includes cholesterol and triglyceride blood tests, as well as advanced lipoprotein profiling. The global market for diagnostic cholesterol tests was valued at around US dollar 3.5 billion in 2023, and it's expected to grow to 4.8 billion by 2028. So that's the other aspect of uh, expenses, and you make sense of why I'm telling you all these things. I'll explain that as we proceed further. Next, let us look at the market size. According to DataBridge market research, uh, the estimates of the global market size for this indication reached US dollar 15.38 billion in 2022 and predicts a rise to US dollar 22.21 billion by 2020 uh, by 2030 which is a compounded annual growth of 4.7%. We are not considering supplementary uh, market items like specialized foods and lifestyle products that a patient would consume uh, if they are having problems with uh, cholesterol and lipids. Well, there are currently no commercially available therapies, specifically uh, targeting ANGPTL3 as of February 2024. The standard of care is evolving. Several potential approaches are in various stages of development. And um, before I proceed further explaining the current uh, uh, therapies that are in development and in competition, let me explain to you why I gave you the cost of uh, alternative um, uh, therapies and um, uh, the diagnostics and other things. I'm looking at it from the point of view of um, a patient who is uh, looking at uh, the prospect of two gene therapies, one of which could definitely address his condition uh, once and done. So how does a patient evaluate uh, the value for such a therapy? So it's going to be what are they spending currently. So currently they must be spending, spending on statin or other drugs. And then uh, apart from that, they might be spending a lot on diagnostics on a regular basis. And over and above that, they would also be spending on specific food items and lifestyle uh, expenses like gym 
and a personal trainer and so on and so forth. So the patient is going to look at all those costs and then they're going to look at uh, the cost of the once and done therapy from CRISPR and then they will decide whether they would like to go for it or not. At present, ICER has not provided any uh, value uh, valuation of such a therapy. Uh, so this is what I'm looking at uh, to get a rough idea of uh, what could be the pricing power out there. Uh, so that said, uh, let us now talk about the medicines uh, that are in the pipeline and which are going to be uh, competitors for uh, CTX-310 um, uh, and CTX-320. Uh, so uh, those, um, uh, the partial list is here. I would say that uh, in terms of genetic medicine competitors, Verve and Eli Lilly have partnered together for Verve 201, which is again in clinical trials, which will be an effective competitor for ctx uh, uh, 320 and um, uh, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals Inc. have ARO ANG3, which is in phase 2B clinical trials. And one of the approved new technology is called Veilivra by Axia uh, Therapeutics, and it's an antisense product that inhibits targeted ANG PTL3 and has been approved for use on patients with diabetes to treat fatty liver. So this is the lay of the land overall. And my conclusions after looking at all this information is that the market size of statins is significant and breaking into this market with two once and done gene therapies, assuming both CTX uh, 320 and 310 get approved, would be amazing. While CTX 310 and uh, CTX 320 progress through the clinical trials, they are right now in phase two clinical trials, alternative technology are also progressing in parallel. These involve uh, mRNA-based temporary solutions where you get a mRNA injection potentially, and uh, that will keep on neutralizing uh, ANG PTL3 and um, uh, thereby giving relief. And also there are, uh, um, uh, other uh, approaches which are in the uh, clinical trials. But uh, if uh, CRISPR gets two fully owned um, uh, therapies in this area, it could significantly improve CRISPR valuation. It's unclear when the approval will be received, but we can hope to see some progress in the Q4 2023 earnings report due anytime now. CRISPR still looks attractive with lots of upside in the long term. And um, I think uh, overall it's... Uh, solidifies the value of uh, CRISPR therapeutics in my mind. I have 100 of those shares in my portfolio and I'm not selling them anytime soon. So that's all from me for now. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And with that, I would like to end this video. Bye for now.